is April 22nd edition of Back Roads of Illinois. I am Cesar Delgado, your Central Illinois Agriculture Source, and the Midwest alongside in Central Illinois. We were glad you are here with us. I talked with some farmers are in the field for it right now, but it will be rain and storms in central Illinois near Peoria and Bloomington. Some farmers are waiting for rain coming out for next week. Yes, I feel the itch as well. Otherwise, we are watching the weather models and the NFL draft on Thursday. We were excited for Caleb Williams Mm. for a new quarterback of the Bears. Mm. Well, we were going to beat the Mm. Packers and the Lions. So, yeah, I am excited about that. Otherwise, our guest today is Arlen Mm -hmm. Suderman from Stone X in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I should probably (laughs) ask him about the pick in the draft. This is the good one. Otherwise, this is your agricultural news on back roads of Illinois. We are watching the commodity markets along with the planting season kickoff. The markets are trading lowest prices on the soybean markets because demand is lower than previously years since 2018. According to the Department of Agricultural, the cattle on feed is dropping by to 1% down from 12% for the cattle on feed report from the Department of Agricultural. The Argentinian corn has a pest in down there for Argentina, and they are still harvesting the corn and beans in down there for Argentina. This is your agricultural news on back roads of Illinois. Now that we are going to talk about the commodities markets. We were talking about the corn market for last night. May corn is up from yesterday's markets in for 39 quarter. How about the beans markets after the close? May beans is up at 1161 this time for wheat. Otherwise, May wheat is up at 570. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on this morning, live cattle is up at 183. 823 feet their cattle is up at 232. 56 lean hog 96 7 quarter. This is your commodity markets update from yesterday's market Sunback Roads of Illinois. We were back with our guest with Arlen Suderman from Stone X. Stay tuned right after this Sunback Roads of Illinois. Welcome back with Arlen Suderman from Stone X in Kansas City, Missouri. How are things in Kansas City, Arlen? Things are real good, Cesar. Uh, It feels a lot like spring. It's heating up and everyone has the, the fever to be out planting corn and planting soybeans in some cases as well. And we're getting a few rains now starting to come through the area, although this next week to 10 days could be quite wet. Me too. I feel the itch for this planting season. Yeah, as soon as the first farmers start to plant, well, then uh, everybody feels like they need to be out there. Are you ready for the NFL draft pick for the Chiefs? 
I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it looks like they uh, may need to pick up a wide <laughs> receiver and maybe a few <laughs> other support players. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Andy Reid always finds a way to uh, put everything together by the end of the <laughs> season. Let's start with our conversation about the planting season and the world ending stock. Could you tell our listeners about these things? Well, with the planting season going forward now, that is the primary focus of the markets. We're still keeping our eyes on the winter corn crop that is known as a safrina corn crop in Brazil. And um, right now, it looks like it's going to be a good crop, although that could still change. The bulk of the crop in Mato Grosso is in late pollination to early grain fill time. I talked to our team in Brazil earlier today, and they've just recently received some more rain, although the forecast is dry from this point forward. This is a little bit early for their rainy season to end. They also have some heat coming in, so we'll have to see if that starts to add stress to that crop. Argentina's crop was expected to be big this year, but now production estimates for it are going down as well. They have a disease in their crop that is spread by the leafhopper insect. And as I talked to my contacts in Argentina, they say it could take seven to 10 million metric tons off the top of the crop. So that'd be 15 to 20% of the crop. We'll have to see how that actually plays out. This is a relatively new problem. So some of this is speculation at this point. Now, in both cases, it's not yet enough to justify sustaining a rally in US corn when we have a 2.1 billion bushel carryout. So I wanna put some perspective on it. The current rally is in response to funds unwinding some of their short positions, their sold positions, because they're getting nervous about these problems that are developing. But it doesn't not yet say that we're going to be seeing our exports rise by a significant amount over the coming year. If these problems continue to develop, then that would change that scenario. Right now we're not, and, and we're also getting help from, a, from the wheat prices that are going up because of dryness in the U.S. Plains as well as in South Russia in Eastern Ukraine. Um, but there again, we still don't know how significant those problems are going to be Wheat is providing some support to corn prices. Soybeans are along for the ride. But the farmer in both the United States and in Brazil still has a lot of corn and soybeans to sell. And I anticipate that's going to limit how much upside we have until or unless these problems get worse. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. the planting for the U.S. crop is looking good. Uh, we're having storm systems go through and then a chance for drying out and then another storm system will come through. Um, some of the forecasts were calling for a hot and dry weather this summer in the Midwest with a move toward a, a strong La Nina by midsummer. But those forecasts have moderated over the past week. And while there is still some risk of that, present, those risks have moderated and come down some this past region expected in its March report. We saw all principal crops come down 6.3 million acreage. That's, a, that's historically a large number to come down in one year without weather being a factor yet. And uh, in similar years, when, when we've seen big drops in acreage in the principal crops, we don't see much adjustment in the June acreage. However, we do see adjustments specifically in corn and soybeans. If you look back at the last 20 years, uh, we have seen corn acreage go up in the June acreage report by one to two million acres or more in eight of those 20 years. And so I'm looking for that again this year as well. I'm going to say maybe one to one and a half million acre increase from what USDA indicated for March in the March survey for corn. Soybeans, I don't see much adjustment, but I think some of those corn acres that USDA failed to pick up on in the Midwest in the March survey 
that they will pick up on in the June survey, particularly if the mm -hmm. weather continues to be overall favorable. Now, when you look at sales to China, there's very little corn being sold to China. China is getting almost all of its corn from Brazil and from Ukraine. They're still doing a lot of business with Ukraine. When you look at soybeans, it's been dramatic, the shift that we've seen from China, depending on the United States for soybeans, toward now becoming dependent on Brazil. And if you look at the data overall, uh, we've seen a decline of like 266 million bushels going to China for the marketing year to date, whereas what they've gotten from Brazil has more than exceeded that. And it's largely a case of with a cheap currency in Brazil, uh, they have... Uh, simply been cheaper than the United States. Mm -hmm. And even when they're similar price, China still tends to favor Brazil since they're another member of the BRICS coalition of nations. Do you see increasing the demand for Brazil's beans dry out? You mentioned that earlier in the show. Right now, it's looking like Brazil soybeans as we look at what's being offered through the summer. Um, right now for China, and China started buying for summer delivery, um, that their basis offers are weak enough that it looks like Brazil's going to have soybeans all the way until our harvest next year and probably have soybeans left over and be exporting soybeans all the way through the calendar year until their next year. So I'm anticipating that we're going to see another decline in U.S. soybean sales and shipments to China for the coming year as well. Now, China has also been buying soybeans from Argentina to put into their reserve. They've purchased about 3.8 million metric tons of soybeans beans for shipment here from April to June that I think will largely go into China's reserve. And those are soybeans that China can lean on or pull from next fall, uh, decreasing what they need to pull from us. They do not like to put Brazil soybeans in the reserve because they don't store as well as soybeans from the United States and from Argentina. So that's why they're buying now from Argentina because it looks like Argentine soybean production is going to double this year to more than 50 million metric tons. How do you have any concerns about the cattle herd, about this bird flu in your area of Missouri, especially in the state of Kansas? Yeah, bird flu showing up in dairy cows was kind of a, a what we'd call a black swan event for the livestock industry. It was not something that was anticipated or expected. And there's even been one dairy worker who has come down with bird flu, which is very rare for humans to get it. Overall, I think it's first important and we emphasize that there is no evidence of any safety concerns for the food. Any milk from a sick dairy animal is, is uh, destroyed, not put into the human food chain anyway. Um, now, as we look at the cattle market, the fear is that we may eventually find a beef cow or beef steer or heifer with the bird flu disease. That has not yet happened, and that's good news. The fear is that even though there may not be a safety hazard for humans, that buyers, be it domestic or exporters, may be afraid of consumer backlash and may withdraw purchases of U.S. beef. Again, that has not happened, and that's good that we have not seen that happen to this point. Hopefully, this story will be able to calm down and go forward. I think the market has pretty well dealt with it for now, and as long as we don't have any other negative news headlines on it, I think the cattle market will move on and just focus on supply and demand fundamentals once again. We continue to see some shrinkage in the supply of beef, but unfortunately, that's taken prices to a level now that has encouraged a tremendous amount of imports of beef, uh, near record amounts of imports of beef to help supply the deficiency. And we've also seen the consumer move down the value chain somewhat toward pork and poultry as well. How is the cattle markets for today? 
Arlen, about the situation of the bird flu drama. Yeah, I think overall it's starting to stabilize now, starting to focus on this last cattle on feed report, which was a, a bullishly construed report, one of the first mm -hmm. that we've had in quite some time with inventories coming in well below even the lowest of the trade guesses. I believe it was 107,000 head mm -hmm. fewer than what was anticipated. And that suggests that we're going to see a reduction in the supply of cattle as we get into the fall that are gonna be available to the market. We're also starting to see a little bit more of a reduction in the number of heifers in the feedlots, suggesting that maybe we're in the very early stages now of starting to re rebuild the beef cattle herd, which is going to take several years to do. I see the time last Friday afternoon Finally, what is going on with corn market for right now alongside with the beans? What tells the farmers should do for these markets? Yeah, I think when you look at corn and soybeans, they're not seeing as much uh, price rally from the short covering that the funds are doing because they're farmer still owns so much corn and soybeans. And particularly in Brazil, the farmer is selling against this rally, limiting its upside. And that part of that's because their currency took a sharp decrease in value versus the dollar. And they sell off the Chicago market and that's converted then into local currency. And so when they have a weaker currency, they're actually getting a higher price. So they have a higher incentive to sell. So that is limiting the upside right now. And I think we have to th start worrying about how much more can this market go higher at this point unless we get some more bullish news. Will we get that? I don't know. Uh, I've kind of outlined what some of the possibilities are. Um, but at this point, it looks like the farmer is selling into this rally. And then start looking at the new crop supplies, see what the new crop December contract for corn and November for soybeans offers relative to what the nearby is. And typically when we have a surplus situation, those contracts are gonna ratchet down to current levels. Our best hope for a more meaningful rally right now is a, is a rapid move toward La Nina in a hot, dry summer. And that is a possibility, but I need to say that the statistical odds of that are well below 50% right now, probably in the 30 to 40% range. So I would look at rallies as opportunities, but use tools that are out there to maintain some openness on the top side. A lot of your buyers of grain offer these over-the-counter products that leave some upside potential in the market in case it does go back up to help you benefit from it. It's turning into Berea's right about Brazil's currency conversion. Yeah, Brazil's currency is proven to be a little bit more volatile lately. And here in the United States, we don't pay much attention to currency when we make decisions on when to sell what we produce. But in most other countries, that's a big part of their decision. And for Brazil right now, that's encouraging sales. And, and, and that probably needs to happen because they're way behind in selling corn and soybeans compared to what they normally would be for this time of year. Thanks, Arlen. Thank you, Cesar. This is Arlen Suderman from Stone X in Kansas City, Missouri. We were back with our last. Welcome back on Back Roads of Illinois. Thanks, Arlen Suderman from Stone X in Kansas City. We were coming right back into the planting season. However, the weather models in the wet side for this weekend coming up. Might we can push back on next Wednesday afternoon after this. We talked with Brian Greek for Pro Farmer in Iowa. I asked him we were going to have some severe weather in central Illinois and the Midwest for Thursday into Sunday morning. 
What does the farmers to get in the field for this weekend? This time is running great for right now. Well, folks, there is your today's program. Thanks to listen on back roads of Illinois. Have a good day.